What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike, this is the Ultimate Tech Hub. Thank you for joining me, I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Today, we're gonna to take you through a detailed breakdown of the Plex Media Server. This includes system requirements, setting up your Plex account, media storage options, the all important setting up remote access, where to get your media, like movies, TV shows, and music, and how to create libraries and add media to those libraries and even organizing those libraries. Important Plex settings like network settings, stream quality settings, and much more. And we're also gonna take a look at the Plex Pass and what it does and the different pricing options. So guys, this video is a little longer than usual because we have a lot of information to share. And because the Plex Media Server has a lot of settings, we wanna make sure to go through all of it. But don't worry, this video is broken down into chapters. So you can click on the areas you wanna watch. But I recommend watching the whole video this way you fully understand the Plex Media Server. And while you're watching the video, make sure to give a thumbs up. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So first, what is a Plex Media Server? Plex Media Server is an all-in-one media software system that stores and transmits content from a central location to all your favorite devices like TVs, tablets, and phones. Plex Media Server works like a hub for all your favorite media like movies, TV shows, and music. And you can simply install a Plex app on your phone to access all your media. And the great thing about accessing movies from a streaming service like Plex is that you're gonna save storage space on your device. Because the large movie files are not stored on your phone, they're stored on your computer, which saves space on your phone. And Plex Media Server supports a multitude of devices like Roku TV, Apple TV, Android, Fire TV, and much, much more. And Plex Media Server is probably the best media server I've ever seen. And the best part about it, it's free. However, there is a Plex Pass available, but I'll talk about that later. But first, let's talk about system requirements and how this all works. To be able to use Plex Media Server, you'll need a home media server with a CPU and lots of storage space. And because Plex Media Server transcodes files, it's very important to have a home media server that's powerful enough to handle this in a timely manner. And one of the best features about Plex is the ability to convert all files into playable content on each device, whether it's Android, Apple, Fire TV, or whatever. And the best way to set up a Plex server is on your PC, because most PCs will have enough power and memory to run the server. And by doing this, all your media will be in a centralized location. And it's important to remember, your PC has to be on 24-7 to be able to access the Plex Media Server. So keep that in mind. And of course, there are many other options on how to set up a Plex Media Server, including a NAS, Network Attached Storage. But for this guide, we're gonna keep it simple and use a PC for our example. Because for most people, you already have a PC, and that PC can act as a media server without buying any extra equipment or setup. And Plex Media Server is compatible with Linux, Mac, Windows, Nvidia Shield, the Netgear Nighthawk X10, and like I said before, NAS devices like Synology and Netgear. And to run the Plex Media Server correctly, it's recommended to have a Core i3 processor or higher. But if you plan on having multiple people streaming at the same time on the server, you may want to go with an i5 or i7. And don't forget about a hard drive space. If you plan on adding a lot of movies to your hard drive, and we know movie files can be rather large, that means you're gonna need a large hard drive, two terabyte or three terabyte or more. And for our media server, we have five terabytes. And I'll have a list of suggested CPUs for your Plex media server. Just look in the description below. So first things first, let's go to plex.tv and then we'll download the app for your computer. And after you install the app, you have to create an account. Use an email and a password. And then Plex will send an email to verify your account. So when you launch Plex on your PC, you'll have to be logged into your account. And from there, you can start adding libraries. But first things first, where do you get your movies, TV shows, and music from? Well, if you already have music on your computer, you can add a music library that connects to that music. But what if you wanna add movies or TV shows? There are a few ways to do this. First way to do this is to take DVDs you already own and save them to your computer. There's plenty of software that can do this. However, it is time consuming, but this is the best way to do it legally. And because you own the Blu-ray or DVD, you have the right to store that on your computer as a digital file. And those digital files will play on your media server, no matter what the format is. Now, the other way to get movies and TV shows is downloading through torrents. And this is very popular, but is also illegal. And for legality purposes, I cannot recommend any sites. So it's up to you how you wanna do this. The best way to use Plex is to organize your media in folders. And I'll show you all of my examples of my folders. And we're gonna start at the top where it says all movies. And then we'll go down from there. And you can see all the different categories. The more detailed the categories, the easier it is to find the media. Because if you put everything into one folder, it's just one big mess. 
So this library should be treated as a library, literally. Now I'm gonna show you how to add a video library. So first, go to Add Libraries. Okay, first go to Settings, then Libraries, and Add Library. Select the Movie option, and then we'll name it New Movies. Then Next. Now click on Browse for Media folder, and search in the hard drive for the Movies folder. For this example, I'll add Western Movies, and then hit Add, and then Add Library and we're done. And what's great about the Plex Media Server, Plex automatically downloads the metadata for each movie, and this metadata adds a movie poster. And now our new folder is in the side menu. Looks good. And now let's go ahead and delete the library. Simply go back to Settings, then Libraries, and delete new movies. It's that easy. And remember, the more folders, the better. And keep it organized. Now let's go ahead and get the remote access set up. This feature allows you to access Plex outside of your network. And to get this all set up, it's kind of tricky because your PC needs a static IP address. So let's get this done. So go to control panel on your PC and then network and then properties. Take note of the IP address. We're gonna use this for the static IP address. Now go back to the previous page and go to Change Adapter Settings. Click on the Local Area Connection, then click Properties. Now go to IPv4 and go to Properties and select Use the following IP address. This is for Static IP Address Assignment. Now type in the IP address that you took note of earlier. Mine was 192.168.1.38. If your IP address is in this range, the subnet mask will be the same as well as the default gateway. So just copy my settings, then click OK. Now it's time to go to the router settings. Go to security, apps and gaming, and single port forwarding. You can see I've already port forwarded to my Plex server. So go ahead and copy everything I have here on the Plex home media server, except for the IP address. You need to input your IP address and then hit apply. Now go back to Plex media server to the settings, and we'll go ahead and go to remote access. And as you can see, we have remote access enabled. Good job. Let's now check out a few different settings to make sure we're all optimized. First, go to general settings and make sure the software is up to date. Now go to libraries and make sure the library is scanning every 15 minutes. And now go to network and make sure that network preferred interface is your IP address. And then hit save. Now go to Transcoder, and Transcoder Quality should be set to High. And our last setting is Plex Web Quality. And you want the video quality set to Maximum. And save changes, and we're all done. And one last thing we're gonna talk about is the Plex Pass. The Plex Pass is a subscription service. With Plex Pass, you get live TV and DVR recording. You also get mobile sync. So even when you're not connected to the network, Plex Pass lets you download your media to another device and watch it offline later. Pretty cool. And Plex Pass includes parental controls. You also get premium music features as well as premium photo libraries and hardware accelerated streaming, which results in a faster streaming experience. And you also get early access to all new Plex features. And as you can see, there's three pricing tiers, monthly, yearly, and lifetime. And of course, you don't need Plex Pass to use Plex Media Server. And to be honest, I haven't bought it yet, but I may in the future. Well guys, we're all done here. This was the 2022 Plex Media Server Guide. All the important things you need to know about Plex. And of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I answer all questions. And guys, if you found the video helpful, please give a thumbs up and share it. If you love it, hit subscribe to keep this channel alive. And I'll see you in the next video real soon. Peace.